Shea Moisture offers several different rinse out conditioners. Is there really a difference between these rinse out conditioners? I'll let you know. Hey, it's me, Naturally Z, and welcome back to my channel where I do feature my net. Shit, no. <laughs> hey, it's me, Naturally Z, and welcome back to my channel where I do feature my fitness journey as well as my natural hair journey at my current age of 55 years old. Oh my god! Wow! love it and what I like to do on the fitness side is show you someone who is in their 50s pursuing their fitness goals and my goals are to lose weight lose fat as well as tone up but also being over 50 I am looking to what am I looking to do that's another thing about being 50 you forget things but I do remember okay I also want to maintain my bone density, improve my, shit, wait a minute, I do remember. This is it. Having transitioned over into my 50s, what I'm looking to do is maintain my bone density with strength training as well as improve my coordination, my balance, and what is the other thing? Oh, flexibility. Yes, so that is what I'm looking to do with my fitness journey. Okay, we got that out of the way. And now on the natural hair journey side, I am looking to care for my hair in its natural state, as you see here. And as well as document my journey to grow my hair in the front to chin length. So with that, I like to bring you guys videos where I am showing you guys my hair, my wash routines, as well as provide you guys with natural hair care videos showing you how to care for your hair. So if you guys like those topics, I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. If you've already subscribed to my channel, Thank you, I really appreciate it, and welcome back. So let's talk about what this particular video is about. It is going to be about natural hair care. Today, what I'm gonna talk about are my Shea Moisture Rinse Out Conditioners. And I am going to do a breakdown of the ingredients to let you know what is going on with these conditioners and if we actually need to buy so many different kinds of rinse out conditioners. So if there is an opportunity to save money on products, I am all for it and that is what this is about because I have over the years, I love Shea, first of all, I love Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture is a hair care company that provides some really good products when it comes to caring for 4C kinky hair and I am all in when it comes to their products. But what I get into a problem is, is that they offer so many different lines of a product. So when it comes to your conditioners, there are several different lines of conditioners that you can buy and I have bought a lot of them and I am starting to wonder do I really need to buy all these conditioners is there really a difference between these conditioners and 
that is what I've done my research on. There is no perfect product. What you want to do is buy the best product that caters to your hair care needs and that's it. And you don't need to go expensive. You need to go with a good solid product and that's where we're going to go with this. So I have my notes here and I am going to follow these notes that I have here because my brain is all over the place when it comes to preparing these videos. When it comes to natural hair care, there are many factors you need to take into consideration because it's not about the products, it's not about just the regimen, it's about everything, bringing these, really? bringing these things together in order to care for your hair in the best way. So I am focusing on today rinse out conditioners and this is a step in your wash routine. It's a necessity when it comes to caring for your hair and it's a necessity when it comes to wash day. What I've done so far is emphasize rinse out conditioners. And the reason I continue to say rinse out conditioners is because there are several different types of conditioners. There's deep conditioning as well as a leave-in conditioner. In this video, I am just talking about rinse out conditioners. And what is a rinse out conditioner? These are the most commonly used conditioners. They are creamy in texture, which you work through the hair to help detangle. This type of conditioner is usually paired with a matching shampoo. After shampooing, you apply an amount of conditioner to the hair and work it through from roots to the ends, leaving it there for a few minutes before rinsing it out of the hair completely. Rinse out conditioners work on the outer layer of the hair cuticles, minimizing tangles and improving slip. Conditioning your hair is a must for 4C hair. We need to use products in order to re-moisturize our hair. So it's one of the steps in a wash routine to help to re-moisturize your hair. And as a result, that is something that will help you to have length retention and grow your hair longer. So in this uh, video, what I want to do is show you what you need to look for in order to buy a product and not buy a product just because it has a different product label. That is something that you can avoid because a lot of times when it comes to these companies, they will sell a product that it may have the same formula for the conditioner, but they just slap a different label on the product making you think that it is a different product when it really isn't and that is where you waste your money so i am going to show you what ingredients make a conditioner and conditioner and i am going to go over and make a breakdown of the ingredients in my shea moisture conditioners when it comes to them there is an industry standard when it comes to making a rinse out conditioner. There are certain ingredients that are used to make a conditioner a rinse out conditioner. It works on the surface of your hair strands, which is the cuticle layers. So with that in mind, I am going to give you a list of ingredients that are staple ingredients that you will find in a rinse out conditioner and that is one water two cationic surfactant three emulsifiers four emollients now all these ingredients regardless of the manufacturer regardless of the brand you will find every one of these ingredients in a rinse out conditioner what each one does starting with number one water it takes up the most percentage of a product if you look at a label on the back of a product which specifically is the ingredients label the number one ingredient will be water because when it comes to an ingredient label it features all the ingredients that are mixed together or formulated to create this product and they are in order of concentration from highest to lowest 
So whatever ingredient has the highest concentration in this product, it will be listed first and it goes in descending order of the product. Water usually takes up to 70 to 80% of the product. So any product that you have, this bottle, 70% of it will be water. And that's just a standard when it comes to these hair care products and rinse out conditioner is no different. While the sirens go by. <sighs> that is a good time for a glass of wine. Okay, so again, when it comes to the staple ingredients in a conditioner, the number one ingredient is usually water. And as far as water, it usually takes up 70 to 80% of the uh, concentration in a product. And then following that is a cationic surfactant. Cationic surfactant is a lot of different ingredients and these particular ingredients are a staple in every conditioner and it's because these type of ingredients they have in scientific terms have a positive charge having a positive charge is perfect for our hair because our hair has a negative charge and so with these ingredients, a positive charge is attracted to a negative charge and will latch on to the hair. So you will find ingredients that are considered cationic, I can't say the word, cationic surfactants in every conditioner. So the number three ingredient that you will find in every conditioner is an emulsifier. And an emulsifier is basically an ingredient that helps to mix oil and water. So that is something you will find in every conditioner. And then an emollient. An emollient is, is an ingredient that forms also a film around the hair strands, helping to soften the hair and moisturizing the hair. Um, and it happens to be mostly oils and other fats that enhance the ability of hair to lock in water. So these ingredients that we see here are all ingredients that are about coating the hair strands and that is what a rinse out conditioner will do. It's one of many products that will help to moisturize our hair. So. Now that you guys have an idea of the staple ingredients that goes into a rinse out conditioner, here are the ingredients for the actual rinse out conditioners from Shea Moisture. Ryan Little. <laughs> One week later. So in summary, every one of these rinse out conditioners, the main ingredient is water. Water is one of those ingredients that helps every other ingredient that is in the conditioner or the product to mix together. So it helps to provide a creamy texture it helps to dissolve the other ingredients. That is why it's called a solvent. 
if you notice, I only focus on the first seven ingredients. These ingredients are the main ingredients to perform the function of the product. So after that, even though there may be 20 to 25 ingredients in a product, you only need to look at the first seven ingredients and mainly the first five ingredients in order to see what ingredients perform the function of the product. So I also want to note that there are other ingredients after the seven ingredients that are in the product. And the ingredients that are listed in the middle of the ingredients label, those can be considered marketing ingredients. Now what is a marketing ingredient? That is something where it does not help with the performance of the product. So let's say in this case it is a rinse out conditioner. Those ingredients in the middle of the ingredients list, those do not help in making a conditioner a conditioner. What it does help with is help to entice a consumer to buy the product. Usually these are featured on the front label of a product in order to entice a consumer to buy the product. And as far as these ingredients that are considered marketing ingredients, there is 1% or less added to the concentration of the product. You don't need to add a lot of a marketing ingredient to the product in order to feature it on the front label. Even though the front labels may say something as far as a marketing claim as you see at the very bottom of the front label, each one of these conditioners pretty much do the same exact thing. As a rinse out conditioner, these conditioners work on the surface of your hair by coating the hair strands and forming a film around the hair strands in order to help with minimizing frizz, smoothing down the hair strands, helping to minimize friction between the hair strands, and also improve slip. So when you have a coating around your hair strands, you're able to slide your fingers, your comb, your brush through your hair a lot more easier. So having gone through these different conditioners, let me give you an idea of what conditioners are similar to each other. So these are the rinse out conditioners that mainly rely on oils to coat the hair strands. And as you can see with this last one, this one stands alone. The Curl and Shine conditioner mainly relies on oils. Those were the products that were heavy on the emollient side in order to coat the hair strands. Now I'm going to move into the products that rely on cationic surfactants and fatty alcohols to coat the hair strands. With these type of ingredients, they are a waxy type of component. It's not an oily component, it's more of a wax. It's a little bit thicker than the oils. So that's what I'm saying that you need to see what your hair better responds to. Does it respond to a waxy type component or an oily type component? And that is the difference between these conditioners. And what these ingredients do, they serve multi-functions. If you see a cationic surfactant, fatty alcohol, which you will find in every, almost every type of conditioner, almost every hair product, these ingredients have multi-functions. They serve to help oil and water mix together, and they also help to coat the hair strands. Coating the hair strands help with softening the hair, helps with minimizing frizz, helps with detangling, helps with slip, so it has many functions. That is why you will see these ingredients as the main ingredients in a conditioner, regardless if it's a rinse out conditioner, a deep conditioner, or a leave-in conditioner. So I hope this gives you an idea of what to look for when it comes to these conditioners. 
specifically in this case rinse out conditioners and also I want to emphasize that don't waste your time on finding the perfect rinse out conditioner because when it comes to rinse out conditioner they all use very similar ingredients you just need to decide whether your hair responds better to an oil-based rinse out conditioner or a cationic surfactant based rinse out conditioner that will help you to determine what your hair feels better with and then you buy a product based on that and always look at the back label at the ingredients list feature the ingredients that actually do the work of the product and another thing when it comes to your rinse out conditioner please be aware that a rinse out conditioner is part of your wash routine and this will not be the only time that you will be re-moisturizing your hair so after you complete your wash routine what you will probably need to do is re-moisturize your hair in between wash routines so don't spend a lot of time money trying to find the perfect rinse out conditioner just find a good basic one stick with that and also consider you will be using sometimes a deep conditioner a leave-in conditioner and other products to help you moisturize your hair and that is part of caring for your natural hair so until next time this is naturally z signing out peace cool. <laughs>